Good afternoon, everybody. John Ward, Director of Emergency Management here at the Emergency Operations Center where Unified Command is for the COVID-19 event. Uh, so today we're on day 70. Uh, we keep adding these days up and, our, and the team here in Clay County has been working a lot of long days for the response here to uh, COVID-19 in Clay County. Uh, today we're not going to have Heather Smiling Face here with us. She's out on another assignment, so I'm going to be speaking some of her points. Uh, to date, we have a total of uh, 333 cases, uh, 25 deaths. That is a 7.51% death rate. Uh, we have currently have 85 hospitalizations, and that is accumulative so far throughout the entire event. Uh, to date here in Clay County, we've done 7,235 tests with those coming back with 6,898 coming back negative. That's a 4.6% positive testing rate and the state rate average rate is 6.1%. Uh, so currently the Department of Health is working very closely with their uh, nursing facilities and assisted living facilities. Uh, they're contacted in person uh, generally about three times a week and it's just to kind of determine their current cases that they have discuss any PPE usage and needs, and then uh, make sure they're following the guidelines to prevent any type of spread within the facilities. Uh, we also still currently have the state incident management team. That's an eight person team that's assigned to the Clay County Emergency Operations Center. And they're responsible for, after we saw this weekend, the governor and the president announced that all nursing home facilities, both staff and residents will be tested. And this team is responsible for that over the 13 county North Florida region. Uh, they currently have seven nurse strike teams uh, with 38 nurses. Uh, one of them is an infection prevention team that comes in and assists in education. And then another one, then they have three more uh, VA teams that are made up of 17 nurses and techs uh, that go, go into the nursing facilities around North Florida and assist in kind of the longer term education and helping them get through these type events. Uh, the Department of Health has currently been working aggressively on what's called contact tracing. As soon as they find out a positive, uh, they begin tracing, they begin the contacting the patients and then working back of who they've been in contact with over the past few days to then reach out and do that contact tracing. Uh, testing in Clay County along with our primary care clinics and our walk-in clinics that are doing them, we're currently doing drive-up testing at the Bear Run Health Department Clinic and that is at 3229 Bear Run Boulevard in Orange Park. And that is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to noon, and then 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. And again, to schedule an appointment, they're doing 10 minute appointments to avoid uh, confusion or uh, congestion, my apologies. That is 877-252-9362. Um, if you've been, uh, for, so we've had a lot of calls in about the testing results that have came back. Uh, since we started our community-based testing. Uh, last week, the, uh, the lab that the state is contracted with had some technical difficulties with their call center, so they've since reset that. For if you've not been contacted within five days of since you've taken the test um, at one of our drive-up testing centers, we'd ask that you call area code 850-583-2419. And that is Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And they now have a larger call center set up to handle the volume of that. And again, if it's five days, five business days after your test, if you've not heard, please call that number. You can also do this by sending an email to COVID-19 results at cdrmhealth.com. And then you'll have to do a confirmation of medical release, and then they can release that stuff through email on that. Um, and then the other thing we've seen too on this lab calling folks, and it was a, a lesson learned on my part also, is a lot of people on their cell phone has their cell phone blocked for private numbers and, and unknown numbers. Uh, this lab is calling from an unknown or a private number, so if you have that blocked on your cell phone, it will not allow this call to come through. So make sure while you're waiting for this call to come in that that is unblocked. Um, as we reopen, rehire, and reunite Clay County, um, please remember we got to stay calm and then we've got to remember to maintain our physical distancing and our six foot separation as we're out in public. We're starting to see a lot more people come out in public and we're starting to see those groups gather up uh, a little bit more. Uh, this past Monday, the Governor's Order uh, 2123 uh, went into effect, which allowed our retail businesses to go to 50% capacity. It allowed our restaurants to go to 50% capacity. It allowed our gyms 
to open at 50% capacity, and then obviously our hair salons and uh, nail salons were already open. Uh, currently, we're working with our, our, the DPPR at the state uh, for our vacation rentals. We're working on trying to get them open by this Friday morning. Uh, we were required to submit an opening plan uh, to the state of Florida and get it approved. Uh, we submitted that on Monday, so we're hoping either today or tomorrow that information will come back, but we're targeting a Friday opening for our vacation rentals so they can take advantage of the uh, holiday weekend coming up. The other thing I want to say is we've had lots of questions on, and please don't shoot the messenger on this, but we did get clarification from the state legal team that currently under the current executive order, tattoo shops are not allowed to be opened at this time. Again, we just got uh, that information probably within the past hour from the state uh, that they are currently not allowed to be open under the current executive order. Uh, we still have a career source that is located here at the Godbold building at the fairgrounds that's working on trying to the, the, re, the rehire Clay County and they're here from uh, 9 a.m. to uh, 4 p.m. Monday through Friday and again you will go to uh, career source nefl.com to schedule an appointment and come in there are many jobs still available all over the Northeast Florida region so please come in and get reconnected with your jobs uh, feeding Clay County. As we continue on, we, we switched locations last week and it seemed to be, be a lot smoother at these new locations. I'd like to thank the school district for allowing us to do this. And again, you're going to go to alert.claycountygov.com to register for this feeding. Uh, those locations are uh, Lakeside Junior High on Wednesdays from 3 to 5 p.m. Lake Asbury Junior High on Thursday from 3 to 5 p.m. Wilkinson Junior High on Friday from 11 to 1 p.m. and then we'll be at Keystone Heights Elementary on Fridays from 5 to 7 p.m. and again you'll go to alert.claycountygov.com to register for this information. To date we've served over 686,000 meals to our residents so it's just showing that growing need uh, for the, what's needed in our community. The other thing I want to make mention is for those that are taking advantage of the school feeding program Please pay close attention to the website and the social media platforms of the school district over the next couple weeks. As it comes to the end of the school year, they will transition from their normal feeding, uh, their school year feeding, to their summer feeding program. So you may see, see some adjustments in that for those that take advantage of that. So please pay close attention on that. Uh, and then one, a couple other things is we've had a lot of questions of, about wildfires as we spoke of last week. Um, currently, the uh, Florida has a 12-month wildfire season that peaks in b between December and June. Uh, and it, as we're getting into that main season, which is that May-June time frame, uh, as we spoke of the KBDI scale last week, uh, 800 is the desert-like conditions or very dry. The normal spring K KBDI for North Florida ranges between 261 and 460. Currently, Clay County is sitting at 380. So what we're seeing is we are, we've got four active fires. Those four active fires are down in the Keystone area. The Keystone area has that very sandy bottom base, and that's where a lot of the, when we get rain down there, it tends to dry out fairly quickly. So, but what we are seeing, we are seeing good news coming, and that we're looking at that seasonal afternoon thunderstorms that are going to start popping up. So hopefully we can get out of the wildfire season fairly soon. Uh, so one other thing is just want to, now's the time as we're approaching hurricane season to, to take that personal responsibility and get that family plan and that personal preparedness kit ready uh, as we enter the hurricane season alert.claycountygov.com and I just want to say stay calm stay strong and thank you for being Clay Strong I'm going to turn it over to uh, Howard Wanamaker the county manager now okay thank you John um, some really good information uh, as we are on our 14th uh, press conference here uh, during this uh, pandemic and COVID-19. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I want to thank everyone for doing their part to uh, reopen, rehire, and reunite Clay County. Also, a special thanks goes out to our first responders, our health care providers, and our health department staff as they continue to meet our needs and help us uh, stay safe. Um, we are now in uh, full phase one of Governor DeSantis's safe, smart step-by-step -step plan as John had mentioned. I equate this to operating at half speed. Uh, we must continue to follow the CDC and healthcare, uh, health department guidance on physical distancing of six feet and gatherings less than 10 in order to achieve 
full speed. I have some announcements with regards to parks and recreation. Beginning this Friday, May 22nd, all playground equipment in Clay County Parks will be open for use. Beginning Friday, June 5th, Camp Chuenwa will be open for overnight camping. And day use facilities can be reserved starting July 1st. And you can call 904-259-8058 to make those reservations. Also beginning July 1st, all Clay County basketball courts and multi-purpose fields will reopen for public use. You can also put requests in to, Clay, uh, to parks and recreation at claycountygov.com. That's parks and recreation at claycountygov.com. Now libraries, beginning Tuesday, day after Memorial Day, May 26, all Clay County Public Library branches will be open from 1 to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. That's uh, at 50% capacity with uh, computer use for an hour each day. And Wi-Fi is also available and can be reached out into the parking lot for patrons. You can call the library ahead of time at 904-541-2758 or email them at libraryinfo at claycountygov.com. Next, animal services. Beginning Tuesday, May 26, gates at the shelter in Green Cove Springs will be open from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday. Okay, appointments are highly recommended so that it's, uh, it is first come, first serve, but appointments will be taken. So please call ahead at 904-269-6342, or you can also email them at clayadoptions at claycountygov.com. Now, county functions. Those wishing to do business with Clay County should call ahead to the county switchboard at 904-284-6300 to make appointments for any specific department out there, such as building, planning, and zoning, and so forth. Now, moving on to the tax collector. Just a, a refresher so everybody knows what the up-to-date uh, hours are. For the tax collector office, all office locations are open with limited capacity. That's 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. All customers are encouraged to wear a mask when they visit. You can reach the tax collector at 904-269-6320 or their website at claycountytax.com. For the property appraiser, the main office in Green Cove Springs is open for walk-in service, and that's 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. The Orange Park branch remains closed. You can call ahead to the property appraiser at 904-269-6305 or visit their website, and that's at ccpao.com, ccpao.com for the property appraiser's office. Supervisor of Elections is open with limited capacity from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. You can reach the Supervisor of Elections at 904-269-6350 or visit their website at clayelections.gov. Clerk of the Court, the Orange Park branch is open by appointment only. Please call 904-541-2784. The Middleburg and Keystone Heights branches remain closed. You can also visit the clerk's uh, website at clayclerk.com. Finally, the Sheriff's Office, the lobbies are closed, so please call ahead to visit. You can uh, contact them on their uh, non-emergency number. That's 904-264-6512, or visit their website, claysheriff.com. Now, please remain vigilant and stay safe as we enter in this Memorial Day weekend here, honoring those who've made the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms, and together, we will continue to reopen, rehire Clay County. Now we'll open up for questions. A uh, question on the number of COVID cases reporting. It looks like yesterday to today we maybe had a jump of 12 cases. Didn't know if you guys could speak if there was a, just anything specific to come of that or if that's just Do you have any go, go ahead, John. So that's coming in along the lines with the, the mandate of all the staff and resident testing that's coming in within the facility. So it's more positives coming back from that is where the majority came in. And they're asymptomatic cases, so they're not showing symptoms and that type of stuff. Was it coming from a specific, one specific? No, it was a, a multitude of facilities that were coming in. the number of cases 
Mm -hmm. Is that trickling down to you guys at all? Or no. Mm -mm. No, sir. Mm -mm. We're still monitoring through our local Department of Health has a system called Merlin, and we monitor the most up-to-date cases through the through the local Department of Health for the information they're getting through that state system. Quick question about elections. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I think they're in August. August is the primary system. Have started to have discussions about plans on that and what may come of that? Yes, we've been communicating with Mr. Chambliss both on getting um, – PPE and cleaning supplies and those type things as to what that's going to look like as far as any change in processes. I'll defer that to Mr. Chambliss, but we have been communicating very closely with Chris uh, because if you remember at the beginning of this, we had the March 17 election. We had an election right at the beginning of this that we were working with him very closely and then still communicating with him on getting PPE and cleaning supplies for their upcoming election in August. But as of this point, it still appears like the in-person vote. Yes. Yes, sir. That is correct. I know they're trying to push the, the mail ballots and stuff like that, but there are still uh, in-person voting. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.